Yeah, right. Uh, welcome back, everybody. So we're on uh, week eight already. <laughs> Uh, so time is flying, um, but we've we've been doing obviously quite a lot of things. Last week uh, we were looking particularly at uh, composition, as you'll remember, and I asked you to print out some pictures, cut them out, and then we put them inside of a, a grid, a rule of thirds grid, that helps you to place things uh, on that grid in order to make the composition or arrangements of those two figures or people uh, more balanced and look kind of uh, interesting as well. So we did that. And then last week, we were also drawing things up. Um, I began or I carried on with my one and was painting it. Uh, and and it was also inspired by some artists that um, I also put on the drives for you to have a look at. OK, so they're all still there. So if you want to look through some of the artists that we've got um, to help us put this composition and idea together for a painting, then have a look. So the idea was really that we're creating our own um, composition, but also being inspired by an, art, by an artist to help us do that. OK, so uh, we're going to go over to the wall. Now, I'll just remind you of uh, the things that are on there and what I was doing with with um, the idea that I was working on last week. So we'll just click over onto that. So if you remember, I had these two photographs. I had this one and this one, which I've used in my composition. And then we've got uh, this just a couple of examples from the drive uh, that you could use to inspire you with your own work. Um, so today in class, what I've been doing is I just did a quick demonstration of how to do uh, some of the techniques on this artist's work. So this is Leonid Afmarov who's um, quite a famous painter, started off his career selling his work on eBay um, and uh, did very well out of it and is now uh, a very well-known artist as well. Um, and then over here, we've got um, the other idea that I mentioned, which was to use some lines which come off of the figure uh, or off of the figures in our case uh, to create a sense of movement through the picture and also to break the image down as well. So that then you have these small sections which you could paint into and hopefully get a little bit more practice using your acrylic painting. Uh, techniques amongst other things as well. So I'll show, I'll go over to uh, my desk and we'll have a quick look at what I've been doing on there as well. So I'll just turn that up a little bit. There we go. So this was what I did before. Um, and if you're, uh, if you can't remember what the size of the grid was, the grid um, for doing your composition, first of all, was uh, seven centimeter columns going down that way. So you've got three of those, two lines in the center there, obviously the ones on the outside. And then going across the rows were nine centimeter rows. Uh, and that allowed you then to break the image up into thirds. And then the idea is that you use those thirds to help create your idea, your composition. So the line down here holds this figure uh, of the girl dancing uh, in the background. And then the line that goes across there um, and the one that comes down is and where it crosses over is where we've got the fan. OK, so an import, uh, an interesting detail uh, in the composition has been put on the two lines which cross over in the composition. And here on this side, we've got the centre of the lady going down that third. And on the top third again, we've got her ear or, or her earring just here. So an, another sort of point that I probably kind of wanted people to look at, but also to draw the eye through the composition as well. All right, so I drew from that, I drew the picture out bigger. And as you can see, I've done quite a bit on it um, today as well. So I drew the composition out um, by enlarge, enlarging it. So the enlargement in this case was nine centimeter, we'll just move that down a bit, nine centimeter columns. OK, by 11, this was 11.4, but you could go for 12. 
properly because you can fit in you could probably fit in a 12 in there but i went for 11.4 across here and across here so then um as as you'll probably remember i drew overlapping lines coming from parts of the figure so from the middle from her thigh the inside of the thigh down across there from the curve on her dress the frilly bits on her spanish dress uh coming or dancing dress coming around here and back up over and that's to link the composition together and then i carried that through the back and over the top so um obviously you can see the link between um some of this sort of stuff that i've done here and uh the one that i'm doing over here now the idea as well of using these lines is to draw your attention to certain parts of your painting so i've got this curvy line which goes all the way around her face and over onto the other side of the picture and i knew that i wanted her face to be kind of emphasized a little bit so i've used a yellow against the skin tone just over here and then darkened it on the other side of that circle so that then we end up with this kind of halo idea here as well um so um that's the basic idea of that um before you start painting you might want to do what i've done um in this and you can see what's left of it anyway because i've painted quite a bit of it that I've added some tone and shadow using my pencil in different areas. And that's just to work out where the dark and the light areas might be within the composition that I'm working on. Okay, so um, don't forget as well to choose a uh, color scheme. Uh, you can use a color wheel. So you can see I've got a color wheel up here in the corner. Uh, so you can use a, a color wheel to help with that. So my composition, I've used um, like reds, yellows and purples around here. The red, uh, sorry, the purple and the yellow being opposite each other on the color wheel gives a little bit of contrast between the colors because I'm using complementary colors. But the rest are pretty closely related, quite harmonious. So I've got the, um, got the reds, and the purples and the oranges, which are all next to each other there on the color wheel. So the idea of doing that is to uh, unite different parts of the image as well. You can then use a, a few opposite colors to help enhance or to help add contrast into the image. You can see those yellows are doing that next to the purples over here. And then we've got these purples and oranges and reds over here, but down here we've got more yellow. So it kind of creates a little bit of movement within the picture alongside all of your uh, lines and so forth. Okay, so um, the Leonid Afmarov uh, paintings that I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna show um, a couple of ways of trying that out because I know that a few people were really interested in using uh, that technique. So I'm gonna do a little bit of that down here for you using a palette knife. Uh, so if you haven't got a palette knife, you can use, um, you could use like a plastic um, knife or something like that if you wanted to, or um, as in the case of this area just here, this is just done with a normal brush and paint um but areas like this which you know you might not be able to get the set a sense of the texture on here on the screen but it's very textured and bumpy so that that's called impasto when something's kind of got that bumpiness to it because uh, the paint ray is raised off the surface and is kind of in, in relief a little bit uh, there's a little bit more of that over this side just over here as well. Actually, you can just get a, an idea of the difference between this, which is much smoother, because I've used a brush, and this, which is much more harsh and bumpy. And actually the colors come out a little bit more um, vivid as well. So um, what I'm gonna do is use my uh, palette knife here and just show you how I would go about adding some of these and you can shade with it as well so you can um choose obviously darker colors on one side and then lighter colors on the other so i've just got the paint on the back of the 
the uh, palette knife over here and I'm just literally daubing it on the surface or dabbing it, if you like, onto the surface as quite pure paint. So rather than I'm not watering it down or adding water in this case at all, I'm literally just dabbing the surface with the back of the palette knife quite gently. OK, and then um, I can go for the second colour. So if I scrape off my palette knife, I can't get any closer than that, unfortunately. But um, so I'm going to get like this yellowy yellow ochre and then just dab that back over the top two. And this is where we get that texture coming when we dab it, because it kind of you push the paint on the surface and it lifts it up. And then when that's dry, it will be solid. And as you know, acrylic paint does not take too long to dry, but when it's this thick, it takes a bit longer. So we can put that down on there like that. Uh, and when it's completely dry, you can also start to add a little bit more um, techniques over the top of it. So. When I say that, I mean adding things like uh, a little bit of a colour glaze over the top. I'll show you that in just a second when I've put a few more bits and bobs on top. So I'm going for this uh, cadmium yellow over there as well. So it looks really vivid and bold and textural. It's really nice to try out. And I'm going to get a bit of purple on this end to darken that side of this area down a little bit more. Um, if you want the paint to be even brighter, obviously you can add some white to it as well. So that's that's a, a really nice little uh, technique uh, that you can try out just there. Um, <clears throat> now I'll just, um, I was talking about glazes. When I um, painted the girl, the girl's face last week, um, I used um, this tube of paint, which I found in the in the set that I've got. Um, so this is Dela and Rowney uh, paint uh, graduate um, acrylic paint set with about I think it's got 48. Yes, 48 acrylic colours in there. But one of them is is called portrait pink. So you could um, use that. That is fairly easy to mix a color like this. If you, obviously a lot of you won't have that. So um, what you'll need is some white, uh, which I haven't got in front of me. Uh, you'll need some white. You'll need uh, some yellow ochre. So mostly white, a bit of yellow ochre which is uh, here, this colour, and a touch of red, just a touch of red and <clears throat> and a very tiny amount of blue, very tiny amount of blue to tone things down. So if you try, I'll, I will mix it in a bit when I've got um, my white out, I've left it in my box, but I'll get that out in a few minutes and um, I'll show you that. OK, but um, for now, I'll just show you uh, a glaze over the top of this area. So if you just want to um, keep the dabs and the color, most of the colors that you've got on an area, then what you can do is add, get mostly water and a little bit of, of uh, acrylic paint. So you've got quite an, kind of a thin wash of color. So look, if I do that, you can see that that's quite thin because it's quite watery. And then I can add that over the top of um, the area that I did with impasto earlier. And then add more water. And the water will obviously go over most of that, but you'll still get some of those colours that you had underneath coming through. But it'll be slightly darker because it's it's just sort of a glaze of colour or a thin wash over the top. So you can add a bit more tone to an area that you've already um, painted. So up here, I did um, a similar thing. So we've got, uh, first of all, I painted yellow underneath this colour, 
this uh, shoulder area. And then what I did is I got hold of some paint, thick paint, put it on the surface and then scratched um, scratched it away again. So um, I'll do, let's see, I'll get some bit of yellow ochre on here. Paint that over so it's quite even. And then I could use my palette knife if I wanted to, to something hard anyway, and you can scratch into the surface as well. Um, so the paint will dry very quickly, which means that after just a few minutes, you should be able to try scratching the surface like this. And you can get some different effects that way too. So that's what I've done on this shoulder here. So it's probably not what I want there, but I wanted to show you how you can scratch away a surface. Uh, so you have the colors underneath and the little bit of color that you've got on the top of it as well. So remember, the nice thing about acrylics is that you can just keep painting over the top of everything. Um, obviously, if you're doing textured stuff and you're painting over that, you're going to get the texture still, but um, you can change the colors and build layers quite quickly because one of the nice things about acrylic is it will dry very quickly. OK, so um, I'll do a blend in a few minutes on some areas of, of this painting, too, and I'll talk through that. Um, but basically, today, what we're going to be doing is continuing to work on these pieces. Uh, and then. Uh, and then um, I will introduce some more techniques as well next week um, as well. And oh, yes. And the other thing that I meant to mention is that <laughs> um, acrylic paint is also really nice to work over with uh, color pencils, too. So I'll just turn this around and zoom in a little bit here. So you can see this area of the painting. I've worked over it with uh, some lines from a colour pencil too. So if I do that, say, on this purple area with this um, dark, can't quite read it because my uh, pencils are well used, but it's, it's kind of a dark bluey purple colour. So you can work over really well your um, acrylic that you've been doing with shading lines and so forth with color pencil as well so you can see there how i've added something extra to that piece um just there they like watercolor ones jamie or like the ink tents no these are just normal uh coloring pencils they're quite they're really nice ones to be honest you know, you could try the ink tents on top as well. So you could shade an area and then get some water and water it, you know, uh, add some water to the colour pencils and blend it back over the top. So, you know, it becomes a little bit mixed media. Then you can combine different techniques on top of each other. All right. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Lovely. Just question. Yeah. Read the flesh. Yeah. Um, when you said white, yellow, ochre, red and blue. Yeah. What kind of red, Jamie? Well, I've got um, I've got I think the colour I just looked at was vermilion, but I would go for probably a prime primary red or cadmium red, something like that. Same with the blue. Um, yes, yes. But yeah, like I said, you need very, very tiny amounts of that. Um, in order for it to work. But I, what I'll do in a minute, I've just got to go over to my trolley and pick up my white and I'll, I'll actually do it. I'll mix it on the on screen for you so you can see. All right. OK. Does anyone else have any questions? Um, Sasha, are you OK? Because I think you, you weren't here last week, were you? So um, do you have everything you need? Um, I'm just, well, I'm starting from the beginning, so I'm just cutting yeah. things out. Ah, and, brilliant. Um, on a grid yeah and then yeah i might need a reminder of what the measurements are for the bigger grid for the bigger grid it's nine by 11.4 or nine by 12 you can get away with well yeah and it's three isn't it yes three three, three rows three, three columns 
yeah yeah and then you can move you can put your um cutouts on top of that grid and where the yeah. lines are and where the yeah. bits cross over the lines cross over is where you want to put your things but you can you know you can turn it landscape you could do portrait ones you could take both your images and swap them around and move them up and down so it's about finding something that's satisfying to you to uh look at um i you know originally i had these two um figures here i had this girl on that side and the head on that side but i quite liked how she was looking away from this one so I swap them over. So the idea is that you're sort of you've got the opportunity to sort of play around with the with the images uh, and see yeah. what you can come up with. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Thank you. OK, thank you. Um, I will get the uh, skin tone and I'll mix. Well, I'll get my white and I'll. Um, Right, I was, where was I? I was going to do a little bit of um, mixing that skin tone. Uh, I've just grabbed a lid, actually, to see if I can get something else. Most of my stuff I've got paint all over it, so I'll mix it in here. Right. Mm -hmm. So, let me get a white first of all. And there's my white. I watch I don't um, ruin the bit that I've just done a minute ago. It won't be dry for a while. So, um, I've got the white just there. Good idea to have a little bit of water as well so i'm just dipping my water in um, my brush in the water rather um and then i've got the yellow ochre so there's the yellow ochre that i put on there earlier i'm just going to mix that so i'm not going to use all the paint all the white because i might need some just to take it back a bit so already i've got this kind of creamy color just here using yellow ochre and mostly white and then to warm that up a little bit and take off some of the yellow, I'm going to add a little bit of um, crimson, uh, no, vermilion, I think it was. That's just a red that I've got out. You can use other reds. So I've done that. And I can intensify that, of course, by just adding more of the other colours. I'm going to add a bit more yellow and a bit more red. And then often that's quite a vivid uh, colour. So I'm just going to add a tiny amount of a blue. And I mean very small, because if you add too much, you're going to end up with um, like a greeny colour. There we go. My my two um, ladies on here have got yep. slightly slightly darker skin. Yeah, really. yeah. I'll just show you. Yep. Um, hang on. I'll those, just those ladies. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's still quite. I've got. I've seen that picture, of course. Um, have it's one of yours. Yeah. 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 Still quite, I mean, yeah, it's still quite pale. You know, you can add in some um, other colours, of course, to the mix as well. Um, so I haven't got, got that one out either, but um, perhaps a touch of burnt umber in there as well would help it, yeah? Give it a bit more of a, a deeper colour. And then, you know, if it's still not rich enough, you can add in some more some more of the yellow ochre as well as the burnt umber and a touch more of red um but what i i mean one of the things i was going to mention as well i don't know if i mentioned it last time is that um once you've applied the color of the skin onto the surface of the person 
right? It doesn't, that doesn't mean that that's it, you know, that's the final sort of color you're going to use um, because you can actually then do what I did earlier with the, um, with this bit just here. You, you know, I just there, I added a, a little glaze of color over that, didn't I? So you could do that also onto your skin color. So, I need to get some uh, more paint out. Yeah. Did you start with the lady's face and then go down to the neck with the shadow? Yeah, yeah. Yes, that's right. Yes. So I put the uh, I put the basic skin tone over the whole thing. And then I what I did is I let that dry and then I added highlights and shadows. So um, let's just bring that down again. So here um, you can see that this bit of tone here. Yeah, that is a watered down color. So I used a bit of burnt umber and a little bit of red but did a, a few successive watery layers of color over that. So you end up with the color underneath coming through those glazes. So it, it's very easy to blend because it's quite watery. Do you understand? Yeah, do you see what I mean? Yeah, I'll just get my burnt umber and I'll do a little bit of that because my little tube has just run out. So lose and stuff. Yeah, so just um, get a bit of that out. 